of East Germany's Katharina Witt. Witt, who knows the road to gold in the World Championship and Olympic competition very well. Katharina and Tiffany are locked in a virtual tie that will only be broken after they skate today. In ice dance, U.S. national champions Judy Blumberg and Michael Siebert return from retirement to try and eclipse their own bronze medal performance last year. But their dance for a medal will be against one of the best Soviet teams in the history of the sport, Best of Yanova and Bukin. The final of ice dance and ladies coming up from the World Figure Skating Championships. Japan, known as the daughter of Chinese civilization. It's a country that has weathered devastation in war and natural disaster. Japan and its many faces is a quick study in the past and the future with technology that touches countries worldwide. Here is a land that has retained the cultural and deeply religious roots that bind together a people who have lived their lives in geographic isolation for 2,000 years. the major religion is still Shinto, based on the worship of nature. Japan is all at once old, new, and different. And today, here in Tokyo, the site of the 1964 Olympic Games, the Japanese are our hosts as we watch the very best in the world of figure skating. presents the World Figure Skating Championships, where all that glitter will fight for the gold. And America's newest sweetheart, Tiffany Chin, is set to blast her way up to the medal stand with hopes of hearing an anthem that last year would not play for an American woman. At 17, Tiffany has fought her way to the top and now enters a final competition today that will allow not one mistake. Because behind Tiffany is the East German magician, Katharina Witt, Olympic champion, world champion, whose present hobbies include sending Americans into retirement. Both Witt and Shin bear the confidence and wear the smiles that could well be erased by the Soviet. Kira Ivanova, who by winning today could complete a Soviet sweep of figure skating gold, unprecedented in world or Olympic competition. Judy and Michael, American ice dancers Blumberg and Siebert, defending bronze medalists in the world. Torval and Dean got it becomes their turn to dance with the Soviets. And their picture of a comeback story could be recorded with medals hung around their necks. We're in Yoyogi Stadium, site of the 1964 Olympic swimming and diving competition. Today, the 1985 World Figure Skating Championships. Hello everyone, I'm John Tesh, and welcome to our final day of coverage here at the World Figure Skating Championships. Today, we bring you the finals of the ladies' competition. And the big news here in Tokyo is good news for the American Tiffany Chin, who, entering the final free skating program, stands in second place just behind the Soviet skater Kira Ivanova, and just ahead of Olympic champion and defending world champion East German Katarina Witt. So, Tiffany has a great chance for a gold medal. And we'll show you the final of the ladies' competition a bit later on in this program. First we want to turn our attention to ice dancing. I want to bring in my expert. He's Olympic champion, four-time world champion, Scotty Hamilton. Scott, now Torval and Dean have left the sport after four world championships. They turned professional, but they've left their mark, haven't they? Well, Torval and Dean are no longer competing as amateurs, but the legacy they left ice dance will change the sport forever. Most of the routines we've seen this week are directly affected by Torval and Dean and are very similar in artistic direction. All right, right now, let's put up the standings entering the free dance, the final competition. You see, in first and second place, the Soviets, but in third, the Americans Judy Berg and Michael Siebert, what are their chances of moving up? Well, last year, Mike and Judy lost an Olympic bronze medal because the judges termed their music undanceable. Well, this year, they've had music especially composed for this competition, and it is very danceable, and it is getting a favorable reaction. The face of Soviet ice dancer Natalia Bestemianova. She is 25. Her partner, Andrei Bukin, is 27. They're first entering the free dance. She is known for her propensity of staring down the judges. And more than one has admitted to being intimidated when she does so. They are dancing to come in. The story of a woman factory worker who is jailed and who seduces her jailer. Let's watch.
Natalia and Andre, notice that all the focus is put on her. These Olympic silver medalists received seven perfect sixes for artistic impression at the European Championships. Entering the free dance, Olympic silver medalists looking for their first gold medal here at the World Championships. Always second behind Torvald Dean. And that was a steamy performance. The hair on my arms is standing up right now. I was on the ice with them. It was one of the most beautiful free dances I've ever seen. Natalia has worked out with the Bolshoi Ballet and that is not hard to believe. So they'll wait for their scores. Ice dancing is skating, it's choreography, and it is drama, as Natalia shows you right here in slow motion. Best of Yanova, Ukin. The scores are going up for technical merits. And they are very good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five lines, one tenth away from perfection. They have to go up in the second mark. The second mark is artistic impression. Remember, in the European Championships, they had seven perfect sixes there. First going into the free dance. With those scores, they will be almost impossible to beat for the gold. We'll see what happens in artistic impression.
Next to skate, second Soviet couple, Marina Klimova and Sergei Panamarenko. She is only 18, he is 24. with the intention of showing the happiness of a married couple. Klamov and Panamarenko are second place entering this, the free dance. They actually beat Vestimianova and Bukin in the Soviet Nationals. But they're behind them entering the free dance. for a bronze medal by one judge. You may have noticed those interesting streaks in the ice. That's because they froze it too quickly before the competition. They couldn't get them out of there. Well, the surface is pretty good, but it's just not too attractive to look at. Soviets haven't won a world championship goal for five years. Most of the reason for that was because of the Torvald Dean, the British ice dancers, but uh, the Soviets appear to be in good shape now to grab a goal. 
with nine judges from nine separate countries punching in their scores for technical merit. Not as good as the Soviet compatriots Bestemianov and Bukin. And we'll wait now for their marks for artistic impression. So this sets up an interesting battle for the silver medal here between these two Soviets and this couple, the Americans Blumberg and Siebert, as we wait for the scores of artistic impression for Klamova and Ponomarenko. Those are much better. One, two, three, four, five nines, which leaves a little room for Judy and Michael, but not a whole lot. They're in bronze position right now. As we see them backstage, mentally preparing for their routine, coming up. Hand in hand, our American ice dancers, Judy Blumberg and Michael Siebert, third going into the free dance, preparing for their routine. And this has been an interesting story. When five-time U.S. national ice dance champions Judy Blumberg and Michael Siebert completed their bronze medal performance in last year's world championships, it was to the music Scheherazade same program and music used at the Olympic Games. But in Sarajevo, while they appeared assured of the bronze, a controversy over their music knocked them into fourth place. An Italian judge had ruled that their music was inappropriate and more suited to ice follies. The Americans were devastated and they wanted to quit. But they came back one month later to the World Championships and announced their last amateur performance, only to finish third once again. It was, we got the medal. We placed third. Our performance was very unsatisfying. We didn't leave it the way we wanted to leave it. It's terrible. Bad news. They had lowered the curtain on their amateur career, but their own reviews of it all made them angry. We didn't even talk to each other. No, we just didn't really talk all summer. I saw, we saw each other once well, or we twice. We did not like each other this summer no, at all. No, it was all. just like, we, we get away, you know? <laughs> why, why? Yes. When we saw each other, it was like, <laughs> yeah. Don't touch. And Don't we didn't. Talk. And we didn't. We've had it. We're done. So the couple who for six years had spent few moments apart, separate ways in New York City. The workouts continued, but they were without one another. And the only thing close to ice was the chill that had developed between the two of them. impossible to say goodbye to each other or to figure skating. They decided the partnership on ice would continue. The separation from the training and the sport had just made them both hungrier than ever for a world title. We're coming back to win. We're coming back to say this is where we belong. This is what we're good enough to have and we want to have it. It began with new music when they met a fan, composer Joel Silverman, who donated his talents. It took a while, but the music eventually spoke the language of ice dance. And now this team of three joins 60 musicians in a studio to record Fire on Ice. dancers needed to again feel and talk like champions and why we're back is because I think you can have it all and I think you can do it all I think you can do something that's artistically important to you as individuals and please the audience that is who is important to us and please the judges and be world champions but starting a new routine less than six months before competition is considered impossible. I keep going back to that. Do the, I know, because, I mean, work for me. It's never too late, but we are late. We've taken a whole summer off. Um, that's unheard of. One, two, three. Sorry. We're working well, and we're our minds are working, working together more efficiently, and we're getting things done, and... Um, consistency is coming, something that really has never come so, so quickly. The, and then right down. That should work. 
the program this year will allow our personalities to show through, and that's what we need, because people enjoy that. People like us. We enjoy that, but we haven't been doing that. <laughs> We've been just really getting into the drama, which is impor was important for us to do. Now we've, we're coming back and moving forward, and we'll show you who Judy and Mike really are. Judy and Michael, getting ready to skate here at the World Figure Skating Championships. We'll be back. So now, in the bronze medal position, entering the free dance, the best American ice dancers, Judy Blumberg, Michael Siebert. States Nationals, it didn't work quite properly because they said that they couldn't really feel the rhythm. So they took it back into the studio, remixed it, made the drums louder, and they say that it's easier to dance to now. Well, I can feel it in my seat, so I know the drums are a little bit better. It's great. I've never seen Michael look more relaxed and happy about skating. I room with him every world championship, and he always was a little nervous around this time, but he's been all smiles, so relaxed, and so up the whole week. doing is so difficult. Non-stop, twisting around here, oh. The steps, the lift, they all intertwine beautifully and it's so difficult. Do not do that in your living room, ladies and gentlemen. told the world they would stop skating in amateur competition, changed their mind, came back, and now entering the free dance that they just completed, they're in bronze medal territory, 
trying to hang on, perhaps move up into a silver. When you leave something like that, they left a little bitter, they came back, and I think they're stronger than ever. Blumberg and Sieber leaving the ice and waiting for their first set of scores to see if they have a chance at taking the silver away from the second Soviet couple. And the two highest scores are two five eights. So uh, depending on what we see in artistic impression, that should keep them in the bronze, but really no chance to move up into silver. Well, they skated their best. That's what they came to do, and it's really out of their hands now. The second set of scores will come up for artistic impression now. And, whoa, a low of 5-6 from the Canadian judge, the United States judge on the other end there with a 5-9, and the rest are 5-8s. That pretty much assures them of bronze, but they will not be able to take that silver away from Panamarenko and Klamova. Let's take a look at the last lift they did in their program. It's very original. He's not allowed to lift her above his shoulder. She swoops down. This is very, very dangerous. And then he brings her back up, and they have a little stumble here, but it wasn't that serious. Right now, let's go down to John Misha Petch. Judy, that was unquestionably a great performance. Was it everything you wanted? Uh, I was pleased with it. I, we wanted to I go out and skate well. The energy was real good. We had a little problem at the end. A few other little places, but the energy was there, and I'm real happy. And we were with the crowd, and they were with us. <laughs> Is this going to be your last amateur performance? Is this the last time we see you in <laughs> you the World Championships? The, you asked us that this last year, and we said yes. We'll tell you in a while. Good. Well, listen, it was a terrific performance, and whether you continue or not, it's something to be very proud of. Thank you, Misha. Final results for gold, silver, bronze upcoming. We'll be back. For so many years, behind Torval and Dean have been Natalia Vestimianova and Andre Bukin, but now they have finally grabbed the gold that they have chased for so long. The silver medalist also from the Soviet Union, Marina Klimova, Sergei Panamarenko. Representing the USSR, Marina Klimova and Sergei Ponomarenko. And for the bronze, one more time, the Americans Judy Blumberg and Michael Siebert, Scotty. This is one of the greatest dance events I've ever seen. We had three strong performances. They were all you. Mike and Judy skated their best. They came away with the bronze, and I'd really like to see them come back and try again next year. So again, the final standings here at the World Figure Skating Championships in Tokyo in the sport of ice dancing. The two Soviet couples, Best of Yanova and Bukin, up top, followed by the other Soviet couple, Klamova, Ponomarenko, and the Americans third. So the story in the ice dancing competition here at the 1985 World Championships, Americans Judy Blumberg and Michael Siebert come away with their third straight World Championship bronze medal. Now upcoming on CBS Sports Sunday, we'll have the finals in the ladies competition featuring American Tiffany Chin, who has a great chance for a medal. But you know, for the American public, there really is only one medal. That is gold, as Olympic silver medalist Rosalind Sumners has found. Yogi Stadium, site of the 1964 Summer Olympic Games Swimming and Diving Competition. Today, the sport is figure skating. Hello again, everyone. I'm John Tesh, and welcome back to the World Figure Skating Championships. We're getting set right now for the final in the ladies' competition, and the race for gold here is as close as it could possibly get, with American Tiffany Chin right in the thick of things. First of all, let's put up the standings now, entering the free program. You see Kira Ivanova, Tiffany Chin, and East Germany's Katarina Witt, the defending champion, listed one, two, three. But even though they are listed this way, they are in a virtual tie. The way the mathematics work here, whichever one of these young ladies wins the free program will come away with the gold medal in the World Championships. I want to bring in my expert, a young man who knows how to win World Championships, four of them, an Olympic gold medalist in 1984, Scotty Hamilton. Scott, we knew that Tiffany would do well here at the Worlds this year, but the chance for a gold? Well, I don't want to take anything away from Tiffany Chin, but for her to be in this position is really amazing. Last year, she placed 12th in the compulsory figures at the Winter Olympic Games to virtually tear herself out of any kind of medal contention. This year, she placed second and is a definite factor in this title race. Also, a similar situation happened last year at the Winter Olympics. Rosalind Sumner's the United States went head-to-head -head with Katarina Witt for an Olympic gold medal. Well, Katarina came out on top, but it seems to me that Tiffany is picking up where Rosalind left, and this could be one of the finest nights of ladies' figure skating we've ever seen. And we look forward to it. The ladies are getting set now for the final competition, but first, let's go down to John Misha Petkovic for a quick report. I've had a chance to watch the top three contenders for the gold medal here, and I have to say that Kiri Ivanova, although hopeful, looks intense. Katarina Witt, 
very determined, realizing the challenge ahead of her. And Tiffany Chin, yet a little bit uncertain, but there's no question that she realizes what she has to do right here. And with me is John Nix at ringside. John, Tiffany has had an up and down year this year, both in terms of her skating and in terms of the level of her confidence. What is the current state of her mind going into the final phase of this competition? Well, we've been in Tokyo for about 10 days now, and I must say that she's uh, been an improving skater. We had a wonderful result in the school figures, and I thought she skated extremely well in the short program two days ago, and uh, she's warming up well, so I'm hoping for the best. Can she win the gold? If she skates well, and if uh, our friend Katerina perhaps makes an error, yes. Good. Thank you, John. Good luck. So Tiffany Chin positioned for the gold along with the other two top contenders, but it wasn't easy for any of them getting this far. The compulsory figures, they count 30% of the total score. It's five hours in a cold arena. And as Katarina Vitt took the ice, she knew the title of defending champion could not help her trace her figures. While Katarina skated, her coach Yuta Mueller could only watch. You skate three separate figures and then you wait. scores came up, Katrina knew that she would continue this competition not as the leader, but as the pursuer behind the Soviet Kira Ivanova and Tiffany Chin. Chin stunned everyone by finishing second in the figures here in Tokyo. And then she and her coach John Nix left the arena with realistic hopes for gold. The three ladies retained their positions in the short program following. Katarina's title defense would not be an easy one, and she now knew it. There was one dream for gold that was shattered even before the compulsories were skated. 15-year-old Midori Ito being carried piggyback after she had fractured a weak ankle. Ito had been Japan's best hope for a medal. She actually beat Tiffany Chin in this year's Skate Canada competition. But she'll watch the ladies battle from the stands. So the first to skate will be the Soviet, Kira Ivanova, as the battle begins here in Tokyo. Kira Ivanova, Soviet, number 16. So the first to skate among the three ladies who have a chance to take the gold here in the World Championships of figure skating in Tokyo. Kira Ivanova, 21 years old, from the Soviet Union. entering this, the free skating program, remember? Olympic bronze medal, the first Olympic medal for a Soviet ladies single skater. Another very difficult triple sack out, she pops it into a double. has never won an Olympic gold or a world championship gold in ladies single skating. The Soviets have a chance for a sweep here. They won the men's, the pairs, and the ice dance gold.
Double axle, a little outside, but she hung on to it. You know, just like her coach, Vladimir Kovalyev, she is known as an enfant terrible. She actually appeared disinterested and bored when she received her bronze medal at the Olympic Games, and a lot of people had a lot to say about that. She turned into a double towards the middle of the program. Really can't be counted by the judges. And she put another one in later on to prove that she could do it. It was a very nice routine. Let's take a look at her opening combination, triple toe loop, double toe loop. The triple toe loop went up very nice, as you can see, and she comes out with a lot of flow and adds on another double toe loop. Very, very nicely done. Scores are up for Kiri Vanova, and they are good. One, two, three, four, five, eights. One of them came from the judge number five, the Soviet judge. There is some room there to get in for the rest of the skaters uh, as we wait for the scores for artistic impression. But technical merit are very good. Those are very good marks. Everything she was clean and very nicely done. The landings had a lot of flow out of them, and she did three triples. <laughs> <laughs> Scores for artistic impression are about the same as technical merit. One, two, three, four, five, five, eight. So one, one additional five, eight for artistic impression. The low of five, seven. Still to come, American Debbie Thomas in her first world championships. We'll be back. American Debbie Thomas getting set to skate here in Tokyo. Before the competition, we asked her how she got started in it all. My mom took me to see ice shows, and I thought, wow, that's neat. <laughs> you can go without, without having to walk. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and my idol was Mr. Frick. <laughs> and it, it took me a while before I got to the competitive skating. Well, Debbie Thomas began skating competitively at the age of nine. Eight years later, she is not only the second best skater in the U.S., but the first black American woman to skate at the Worlds. It's a rare thing to be at this level, and there aren't many black skaters. And so, you know, the, the probability of having a black skater at this level is, is slim. And so I just happened to be the first one. So it's, it's a... I guess it's, it's an honor. What's on Debbie Thomas' mind here in Tokyo is more than what will happen on the ice. Her abilities in school will allow her to pursue a career in medicine, but college may wait for skating talent to reach its full potential. In fifth place entering the long program, she really has no chance for a medal, but in her first world championship, her thoughts are not on the top three positions. skate my best and I'll, I'll be proud of myself and I'll know that I've made a good showing and that people and the judges will know who I am and that I have a chance in the coming years. The first of two 17-year-old American girls to take the ice here in the ladies free skating. Debbie Thomas.
And what she's going to do is she's going to show us that she has the hardest routine in this competition. Her opening move, which is pretty crucial, is a double axle, triple toe loop combination, the hardest one done in this competition. Pow! Whoa! What's right on the money! What's amazing is that she is hurt. She pinched a nerve in her back during her short program, and she couldn't even do her spins in practice today. fifth entering the free skating program, which is really amazing considering her lack of international competition. Oh. Put her hand out. Well, she's had a good couple years. The last two years, she's won three international competitions, and if she finishes in the top five here, it would be the highest debut since Janet Lynn in 1968. Oops. That's the second mistake she's made. It might be her back affecting her. Your last three jumps, I can only think that it's her back that's really affecting her and making her hold back on, on everything she tries. She opened up so beautifully. at Berkeley. She says she wants to get into Stanford because it's closer to her ice skating rink. in the World Championship or major international competition. And a surprise silver medalist at the national championships behind Tiffany Chin, who you'll see skate later on. Here's a replay of the triple loop jump that she missed. She's a little outside. It's a rough angle to see, but you can see how tilted she is, and she just goes down. She couldn't save it.
Toby Thomas sitting with her coach, Alex Dugal, and scores up for technical merit. What do you think, Scotty? Well, she got a 5'8 from the Canadian judge and a low of 5'4. She made some mistakes early on in the program, but she opened so beautifully. She did the double axle triple toe, which is going to be the hardest combination done tonight, and she really did do some impressive things. So, it's you know, you got some mixed emotions there. Look what the Soviet judge did to her. A 5'3". Five, five, now, waiting for the scores for artistic impression, seeing what we get there. And about the same, a low of 5-3 from the Finnish judge, but the uh, Soviet judge was a little kinder with a 5-5. Five, five. Well, she's a very powerful skater. She doesn't show a lot of, of imagination and innovation in her routines, but she's powerful and she holds a line and she does her stuff. Five, 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 Upcoming, the defending champion, the Olympic champion, Katarina Vitz. Stay with us. Five, 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 five. All right, here she is, the defending ladies champion, Katerina Witt. She, along with Tiffany and the Soviet Ivanova, all in the position to win coming into this free skating program. Now, earlier this week, I had a chance to chat with Katerina here in Tokyo. And in a rare unchaperoned interview, she agreed to speak with us in English. Are you happier now than you were one year ago? I'm sure I'm happy <laughs> because I'm the Olympic winner and the world champion, but it's harder too. In East Germany, getting to the gold has become almost an exact science. Here in a training facility in Karl Markstedt, watching the evolution of new champions requires only a quick glance around the ice. Hopping five-year-olds become jumping 12-year-olds. And then from it all may come that crown jewel, a Katarina Witt who will then inherit the personal attention of the legendary mentor of figure skating, Frau Jutta Müller. The Frau Müller School of Gold, if you will, has scooped up 49 medals in European, World, and Olympic championships. And for now, Müller's most effective weapon is this 19-year-old girl. Müller's coaching and Witt skating won Katarina an Olympic along with a World Championship gold last year then turned loose on the world not only a skating champion, but a matinee idol that kept the postman of the world awfully busy. So I want to say sorry to the boys, <laughs> because I answer, I didn't answer, I haven't time, I have so much letters in my home, it was, it were 20,000 from all over the world, and Till now, I'm not finished with answers, and so they must wait. <laughs> Katharina's dream world on ice is one the people of her country will likely only see on East German television. The young lady in the white ski suit and red earmuffs can stroll through her hometown of Karl Markstadt and feel comfortable with the thoughts that she may occasionally leave the country's boundaries marked off by a wall and barbed wire. That the foreboding face of Karl Marx can be replaced by those of adoring fans. Katarina Witt's passport to a different life. Since you live in a socialist country, would you get the chance to travel and see the things that, uh, that you like to see now? No, I didn't have this chance to see all these places. It's only for good athletes and not of people. Do you feel fortunate? Yes, I feel so. <laughs> well, the fortunate part of figure skating for many American champions comes when they retire. For them, ice shows provide the means to make a living after amateur skating. Americans can effectively skate for their country, and when that's over, they can skate for themselves. And the amateur career becomes a professional one. Not all champions have a choice, however. And so I think it's good to do, to go in a show for skate, because to skate for myself. So I have fun on figure skating, and so I wish I could do that. 
Bye. Well, for now, 19-year-old Katarina Witt Bye. will have to settle for a chance to skate for the gold for her country. We'll be back. Katarina Witt. Number nine. Some last minute instructions from Coach Jutta Mueller and the Olympic champion, defending world champion, Katharina Witt is ready to skate her final program. Coming into the free skating, Katarina, Tiffany Chin, and Kira Ivanova are in a virtual tie for first place. And, she and the one lady who wins this free skating program will come away with the gold medal. Well, she looks great so far. She's done all of her good stuff in the beginning, which she didn't do at Europeans. She looks really strong. She's been very confident all week in practice. she's wearing, the skating outfit may look familiar to you. It's the one she won the Olympics in. She says it brings her luck, she feels it gives her that extra edge. I also think it's terrific that she's using the same routine that she used last year in the Olympic Games. You know, it's, it's so hard to perfect a routine in just one year, and it's always nice to be able to come back and do it a second year, especially when she was so successful with it. Katarina is giving her best effort. <laughs> Showing you her musical ability now. It's funny, today during practice she was improvising everybody else's music. That's how loose she's been here. Mueller. 
Now here's a combination that really set up the pace for the rest of the program, a triple toe loop into double toe loop. She goes up beautifully straight, spins, opens nicely, comes down a little stiff on the knee, but she pulled out a beautiful double toe loop. So 5'9", another 5'8", and a 5'7". Well, those are great marks, but it still leaves some room for Tiffany Chin to come in and win this freestyle program, but she has to skate her best. Tiffany is still to skate, remember. And now the scores for artistic impression will follow those of technical merit. Nine judges from nine. Oh, oh, one, two, three, four, five, five. the Soviet judge. Well, I've never seen her do a finer routine than the one she did tonight. Everything was delivered, it was clean, and it was delivered with confidence. There is more pressure than ever for young five Tiffany Chin nine, as she prepares nine, to take the ice. Five nine, five nine. Scott Hamilton getting set to watch Tiffany Chin skate, a youngster who's lived a lifetime already at 17. I can't make many mistakes at all because people will be right there to pick on them and to enlarge them and show them. Whereas when you're coming up, it, it's okay to make a few mistakes. If you follow the meteoric rise of 17-year-old Tiffany Chin, then maybe you'll remember when the meteor was but a young skating prodigy in sequence performing in shopping malls. When the photographs were of a kid in braces who was getting awfully good on skates. and own a World Junior Championship, you'll sign your share of autographs. But now, Tiffany has become the heiress to the national figure skating stage. Gone are Elaine Zayak and Rosalind Sumners. And just in time, Tiffany Chin's cocoon has opened. What we see is America's newest skating sweetheart. What she finds is hard work under the tutelage of Coach John Nix. to Hollywood. <laughs> and so it is for Tiffany, part Hollywood, part high school. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give a big round of applause for the United States Ladies Single Figure Skating Champion, Providence's own <laughs> Tiffany Chin. the name of Providence covered all over the world from Japan when Tiffany wears her hat. Yeah, I feel like the national champion, but I also feel the responsibility more that goes along with it. And I feel that I'm really going to have to do a lot of work between now and the world championships. Well, getting to work at the rinks is usually done in long highway drives while catching 50 winks in her mom's Mercedes. Marjorie Chin, who emigrated from her native Taiwan in 1961, is always by her side. In Tiffany's ear is either Marjorie or the coach. What we have to do is to get the first spin centered, and when you jump, not to jump with your foot there, but to land in an upright spinning position. When you landed, your foot was a little low, and it took you a little while to get going again. So we can do that once more. As she goes in, not as favorite for the competition. The uh, defending champion, Katarina Witt, will be favorite. But I think Tiffany goes in there with a very good chance of a medal, and she knows it, and I think she's confident about it. So the heiress to the throne. You have to wonder if Tiffany ever thinks about the story everyone likes to tell about that garage sale many years ago when Marjorie Chin picked up a pair of skates for a buck. 
decision to wear skates till now finds Tiffany Chin, high school student, cover girl, and world-class figure skater in an eight-hour-a-day job, trying to perfect a craft in one of the most competitive sports in the world. That she is America's best entering the world championships only refocuses a spotlight pointed at the 17-year-old young lady from Toluca Lake, California. I'd be happy just to do my best, and I think my best is pretty good, pretty darn good. <laughs> Tiffany Chen to skate for the gold in a moment. <laughs> 17 year old Tiffany Chen will have to beat the Olympic and world champion Katarina Witt in the free skating program to take the gold away from her. this year. She is so much more mature than she was. Tiffany 
Jackie Chin from Toluca Lake, California. And do you think she still has a chance for the goal? I don't think so. She made two errors. One was a major error, the fall in the double axle, and the single sow cow was noticed by the judges. She needed that triple sow cow in order to even be close to Katerina Vick. Here's a replay of the double axle. She goes up not quite as high as she usually does, comes down on the edge and slips right off of it. it she must have been tired. It was right at the end of her program. The marks have not yet come up for technical merit, but already Katerina Vitt is being congratulated by teammate Constance Genzel backstage here. Here are the marks for technical merit, and they are not as high as Katerina Vitt's. We'll have to wait for artistic impressions. Still backstage here is Katerina Vitt. And uh, as the scores come up for artistic impression, no, Tiffany is not going to get a chance for gold. We'll have to see if she can hang on for the silver. Let's go down to John Misha Petkovich now. He's just by Tiffany. John. Well, Tiffany, I mean, an absolutely brilliant program with just a couple of errors. What happened on those things? I don't know. I just kind of slipped out of it. At the end, I was a little bit tired, but... Something I could have done. I'm really disappointed that I did that. Well, I'll tell you. What do you think of those marks? Oh, I think they're pretty five, good. Five sevens, five nines. I mean, do you think it's enough for the gold? No, I don't think so. What, what, what will be your plans now? Well, I haven't really made any because everything's been geared toward the World Championships, and now it's, you know, it's just over, and I really don't know what I'm going to be doing right now. Well, I can understand that. Listen, I think that. Aside from those two minor errors, the rest of the program was skating with a confidence that we have not seen from Tiffany Chin for a long time, and I think it was terrific. Thank you. Congratulations. Well, it's not official yet, but you heard Tiffany Chin concede the goal to Katarina Vitz. We'll be back with the final results in a moment. It is now official in Tokyo at the World Figure Skating Championships. 19-year-old Katarina Vitz wears the gold medal. The disappointment here, though, is that because of her pre-skating program, Tiffany Chin was not able to hang on to the silver. So this young lady, Kira Ivanova from the Soviet Union, takes the silver, and Tiffany will wear the bronze. It was a great battle, and once again, Katerina Vitt stands tall on the winner's stand. The final standings, Vit, Ivanova, and Tiffany Chin. I'll never forget two years ago, 17-year-old Katarina Vit won the European Championships. She was a little girl then, and now a beautiful young lady. Her brother, a world-class soccer player, married Olympic champion Annette Putsch. They just had a baby, and so now Aunt Katy will listen as they play the East German National Anthem.